Matt Lenehan, Boxing Social and Association with Empire Fight Store. We're here in Charlie, the king of Charlie's gone and taken everyone on a 5k run, yeah. Mr Jack Cattrall. Uh, seems in good spirits for to go like. Yeah, yeah. mate, he is. He's, uh, he's enjoying it for the, for the first time in a long time, you know, he's got a bit of momentum and um, it was a really good turnout for it, you know, I didn't expect that many people to be here, you know, men, women, kids, all, all, you know, from everywhere, so uh, really, really good turnout for him. How good is it for you to see someone like Jack, who you've had where, um, so everyone always references the, the Josh Taylor fights and the inactivity, the moving around promoters, but now he's on form, he's fighting fight after fight after fight, yeah. and he's going to be the first fighter alongside Regis Progre to headline at that massive arena in Manchester, yeah. Corp Arena. It must be a bit of a buzz for you, like, as well, Nigel and everyone. Of course it is. It's so good to see him sort of enjoying the sport you know he loves it he, lo he loves the sport he, he lives for it and through all those setbacks and those that frustrating time period never once you know did he sort of he had days where he was down and, and stuff like that but it didn't put him off at all he was always sort of persevered through it all so to see him come through the other side and, and start enjoying you know reaping the rewards what he deserves mm -hmm. is so good to see I know everyone wanted a world title shot next, and a lot of the time, I think we spoke after the fight, it was, you know, Tiafimo Lopez, you know, providing gets past at the time of Steve Claggett, which obviously he did. That would have been ideal, but in terms of Regis Progre, who's, you know, former former world champion, it's not it's not a bad second option before, you know, potentially if he gets through. No, of course, in an ideal world, he'd have got a world title shot straight away, and, and you know, and deservedly so, I, I feel. But Jack's the, the type of fighter, he'll always perform to the level of his, of his opposition mm -hmm. so we didn't want to sort of give him a marking time fight and wait hoping for a world title shot because number one activity is, is always been one of his main priorities in, and he's wanted to be active and number two it's got to be against the right opposition mm -hmm. and Regis Progre is probably the hardest opponent out there outside of a world champion mm -hmm. and um, and he wanted that type of challenge because he knows that that'll bring the best out in him. You know, yeah. he's probably more at risk of losing to a to a fighter where he doesn't respect him and he, and he maybe takes his eye off the ball. Mm -hmm. So this was the the perfect chance. Um, moving away from Jack, obviously a lot happening in boxing at the minute. We've seen um, from Saudi Arabia, His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh, um, Golden Boy Promotions, um, Top Rank. They've all sort of joined and you know become part of the deal with what's happening in Riyadh season. Um, They've got part of every think major boxing promotional company outside of maybe I think boxing probably PBC. It's a it's a huge takeover. What's your sort of stance on it all? There's been a lot of big fights made, haven't they, over the past twelve months? Yeah, what all everyone's spoke about in the last 20, 25 years. My time in professional boxing is making you know people wanting to make the best fights possible and complaining about the promoters not working with each other so in that sense it's perfect it's the ideal scenario is all the big promoters are working together so perfect the next problem would have been you know but we don't want it all to be going over to saudi arabia because then it takes away the opportunity for us to go and watch them in our in our hometowns and stuff you know valid argument yeah. um but the the, the putting shows on maybe not as regular as people would want but the putting them on nonetheless all, you know, in, in, in England, in America, and this is brand new. So who's to say it won't happen more regularly in the future? So it, it's, a, it's a brilliant scenario for boxing. The, the boxers are all getting getting um, paid well for it. The best fights in boxing are getting made. There's some unbelievable cards being built with not just the top of the bill is a good fight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's stacked card with like five, six good fights on there. Yeah. So it's a, it's a boxer's dream. And, um, you know, people have talked about for years that UFC type of scenario yeah. where they go, all the best fighters are in the same sort of league, so to speak. Um, and I think that's what he's trying to do. He's not trying to eradicate the promoters and sort of make them irrelevant because he knows that he would never get anywhere with that. Or if he did, it would take maybe 10, 15, 20 years or whatever. Whereas it, if he brings them all together, then by doing that, it brings them all under the same umbrella. Yeah. It makes all the fights worthwhile. 
they're not losing out, the promoters, so everyone's a winner. So it's a, it's, it's a great setup. Let's talk about one of them cards. We've got Terence Crawford, Israel Madrimov, um, Andy Ruiz against um, Jarrell Miller on the card, yeah. Andy Cruz. Um, the list goes on and on. That's a terrific card. In terms of the Crawford Madrimov fight, um, purely just from like a fan's perspective now, you must be licking your lips at that going, he's stepping up in weight. Madrimov's coming off a, a, a brilliant win. So is Crawford, obviously. Yeah. But a terrific fight how do you see that playing out because there's big implications for the winner of that there is and you know I know I think people are sleeping on Madrimov I really do yeah, you really know Crawford unbelievable fighter but I, I, I just feel like the the um, his last fight he flatters him a little because of the weight issue you know I, I forget his name what's his name um, Crawford Spence Spence yeah. um, Spence He's huge at the weight, and I feel like he was weakened by making weight. And then, therefore, even though it's an unbelievable win, I don't. I think it flatters him. And I think the thinking behind it is, you know, the size of Spence will go up, and and we can set the chance against um, at, at super welterweight. It's a big, big risk, I believe. You know, yeah, he, he hasn't got the attributes what he has when he's been coming through the weights from lightweight, and um, and. You know, for me, it's a it's a fifty fifty. I really, can, I, I really, I, I don't think it, people are talking about him fighting Canelo next, and you know, as if it's a foregone conclusion. There's no way I'd be overlooking Madrimov. What's what's how big of a statement win would it be if say Terence goes out there completely dominates or stops a Madrimov? Huge, huge statement in my book. And then, even though I still think Canelo's way too big and too talented for him, it actually puts a question mark over has he got a chance here yeah. if that's the case so it really will be a statement performance if he, if he does that if, if he does and I'm not looking past Madrimov because I'm with you I think this is a great fight yeah. would you want to see Crawford versus Boots or Crawford versus Canelo hmm. that's a see, good, see, 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 I'd intrigue with Canelo though isn't it see, see, see with Canelo is everyone's always spoke about Canelo in a way where they go he's small even even when, when, I remember when Rocky Fielding fought him. I went to the to the Chet Wayne in the next morning into his room. I'm I'm an ex super super welterweight. Yeah. So's obviously Canelo. He come walking out the bed and jumped on the scales, and I looked at him and I was like, he's tiny, and I mean like really really small in yeah. structure. But then when he got in the ring on the night, I, he, he did seem to have got, you know bulked up. The yeah, night. it thickened out. But um, I just think that. For Crawford fighting Canelo at this stage when he's been in there with light heavyweights for me it's just it's a, it's a step way too far I'd rather see Boots because it's two welterweights good you know I'd, I'd say Crawford now is a, is, is a natural welterweight you know as you get older you, yeah, you, tend, you tend to fill out I think it's an unbelievable fight but I get Crawford's thinking is if he goes and beats Boots even though he knows it's a really difficult fight he won't get the credit where even if he doesn't beat Canelo but he gives him a hell of a fight he'll get a lot of credit for it yeah. so even more money he, probably as well may, way more money but you know and I do understand it he's, he's, he's talking about money but he's also talking about legacy and he mentions legacy first a lot of the time in the conversations what he has so if he's thinking I want to try and cement my legacy and also I'm going to get paid massively at the same time mm -hmm. then a close fight against Canelo goes way further than a win over Boots. So, I'm going to chuck you one out here now. Um, WBA came out and said, potentially, they could see, or wouldn't mind seeing, Jake Paul. Oh, yeah, I've seen this before, yeah. And um, I believe it was, Ch was it Chavez Jr.? Junior, Chavez yeah. Jr. Yeah. fight for a championship. Now, I want to make clear, I've only seen the words championship. That could yeah. mean a WBA form of belt and a bet. You, if that, if you'd that, imagine it was an international belt or something yeah. like that. That's my th that was my first thought because there's no way in people a million ran years. ran away with the idea this was meaning world title. Unless I missed where he says world title, he said for some form of championship. That's, exactly, that's the wording I saw was that, and I just assumed he meant an international title fight. Now, if that's the case, it's not it's not upsetting ranking so to speak. Um, it's only getting he's he's going to get Jake Paul the ranking. The WBA going to take it because the. Um, the sanctioning fee will be big, yeah. so so they're going to get paid well, and and then it pushes him into the top sort of fifteen in the world. 
Is it a bit of a farce? Absolutely, because he's had one fight against a professional boxer and he's lost to, to, to Tommy Fury. Um, so for him to be allowed to, to fight for a title, then he just shows you that money, money talks. And uh, I, in all honesty, even though I don't like the fact that the way he's going around it, you've got to respect the way he's... He's hustling, mate. Exactly that. The, 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 the way he moves and the way the, the way he manipulates situations and gets things to work his way, he's, you've got to take it out of him. In a, from a business point of view, he's, he's an intelligent guy. Yeah, and look, we have to say as well, he has he has took himself away and he is training by all kinds. It's not, it's not like um, where we see sometimes maybe on some of the other crossover stuff where you can tell sort of people have just maybe walked in. Yeah, a whereas, gimmick. whereas he you, seems you, to be training, you can see least, he's yeah. really training. Listen, and, and I've seen people's comments, and they're right. He's had six years of training as a professional, but he's only fought one, and he can afford to to get the best coaches and the best strength and conditions in, in the world. So he should be vastly improved over the last six years. But it, can you imagine if he won't get the respect off? pure boxing fans by going beating Chavez no, because Chavez is known to be inactive not been in a competitive fight properly for years drug abuse you know he's had his problems I know, let's be ma ma massive massive problems and I hope he's okay but he but but Jake Paul won't get the um, respect that he should get imagine if he started fighting proper you know legitimate even professionals coming through who'd had 10-15 fights oh. Uh, maybe maybe won 12 or something yeah. like that. You know, proper fighters. And he went in there and he'd done a number on them. Then people would start going, do you know what, fair play to him. But he's not going to get respect unless he earns it. Just last one on him. Is this Mike Tyson situation, which is coming up whether anyone yeah. likes it or not, I've asked a few people this. He is count. it Mike Tyson no, doesn't count as an ex-professional. No, I'm saying, does this... No, I'm saying, does it sadden you from the outside looking in? Well, I'm sure you'll have gone from the era of, you know, when you were starting your career... About this, this, this legend of Mike Tyson. Even myself, um, when I you look Mike at him, Tyson. like, does it? I don't say does it upset you, but does it not? Does it? How does this set? How does this sit, sit right. with you? Doesn't sit right, unless Mike absolutely splatters him, and then it'll sit right. But I don't think any sixty-year-old man should be taking part in a professional boxing match. You know, he's obviously going to get massive dough. Um, I don't know his own personal situation, but listen, I'm 45 and in 15 years time, we might be doing an interview and you're going, why the fuck are you doing this? I know you're getting paid 10 million quid, but and I'd be going, oh, well, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, but it's so, a bit different. Do you not think you're, you're on the training I'm side Mike of Tyson. it? I'm not Mike Tyson. Yeah. And if you're still doing this, you're, this is the training side of it. You're not, you're no, not getting... No, no, you're not I, getting mean, I mean, if I was going to fight oh, yeah, 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 at yeah. 60 years Jesus, old, yeah. and you'd be going, what the fuck are you doing? Exactly, do you know what I mean? So, so until you're walking in someone's shoes, don't judge them. But yeah. as the next fighter, I wouldn't fight now when I'm 45, never mind at 60, yeah. 60 years old. Um, last one for me. This Wembley card, we touched on it. Joshua Dubois, um, Warrington Kakache, Hamza Shiraz, Dene. Um, what fight are you looking forward to most on that card? I think there's a lot of 50-50s and the main events are bang on AJ Dubois is a fantastic fight, but Warrington Kakache, for me, has got war all over it, honestly. And it'll, it, for, it'll really let us see what Josh Warrington's got left. Because stepping up in weight as well, which he said he wants he, to. Well, I think it's a natural progression at his stage. Everyone should, for a, from a, from a performance point of view, step up at some point in the career because you can't keep dragging your body down to a certain weight and expect it to perform. And Josh is big at the weight. I actually took um, Akib Fias down and spa, um, to spar with him um, yeah. a, a month or so ago, and it was. Um, it didn't last long because he pulled his back a little bit, Josh, but you can see he's really sort of filled out into the weight. And and he's strong. He's physically very strong. His record doesn't suggest that he's a puncher, but he is. Believe me, Carl Frampton told me he's a puncher and Carl can take a shot. I actually asked Carl a couple of days ago at the Birmingham show and he said it a few times, but he never said it to me and he just goes, look, that fight, he says, obviously, you think you got a favour, maybe Anto, etc. But he says, people keep telling me Warrington's not a puncher. I've never been hit as high. He goes, I've never been as hit as hard in my life yeah, exactly. and that's a guy with what eight knockers but Josh never really had it easy coming up so maybe that's why yeah so he, he said that straight away he went fuck me he can punch we had Anto over for sparring <laughs> with Carl and at the end of the first round he came back to the corner and went fuck me he can punch so this is a, a fight between two aggressive punches and I don't know if it'll last that long 
but I, and, and I really don't I really can't pick a winner on which way it'll go yeah. I reckon it'll probably go three or four rounds of a right barnstormer that's what we want to see Jamie uh, appreciate your time thanks for always being generous with it and we'll catch up soon cheers mate